Joining us now from Moscow, Dmitry Peskov, Vladimir Putin's right-hand man. Mr. Peskov, thank you for joining us this morning. We, we heard President Putin thank yesterday. Thank you for inviting me. We, we heard President Putin yesterday say, read my lips. There was no interference, Russian interference, in the U.S. election. As you no doubt know, that read my lips promise here in America was later overtaken by events. Are you confident that President Putin's denials will not be contradicted by new evidence? We're quite confident. We're confident for 100 percent. Actually, this campaign, we've, we've been uh, saying from the very beginning that it was nothing else but slander. And then uh, all, all, all those fake news uh, having nothing uh, beneath and having no evidence were nothing else but slander. And that's why uh, we'll continue to suggest to everyone insisting that Russia was interfering in this or that way in, in, into domestic affairs of the United States. We will suggest them to read Mr. Putin's lips. One of the conclusions is that Russia was trying to hurt Hillary Clinton and help Donald Trump. You've said yourself that it's natural that Putin would prefer Trump. Why? Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, listen, uh, for example, uh, we have a, a variety of politicians in every country, and we have a variety of politicians in the United States. Some of them are saying that we are in favor of uh, reestablishing good relationship with Russia. We think that we have lots of problems, and we, we are sure that we will not be able to agree upon everything, but we are sure that we have to, to have a dialogue with the Russians. This is one flank. The other flank is those who say, uh, no, Russians are our enemy, and we are strictly against any contacts with them, and we don't give a damn about their, their interests, and, and uh, we reject any possibility of cooperation, even when it is in our own interests, let's say in, in a field of combating terror. So, uh, which one would be more sympathetic for you? For us, the one who is saying that, yes, we disagree uh, in lots of things, but we're going to talk to Russia. So President Putin This did one is more sympathetic for us. So, so the reason is very simple. So President Putin did prefer Donald Trump? No, it's not, it's not about preferring someone. It's, it's about um, uh, whose ideas are more close to you and who, whose ideas are more welcomed in Russian public opinion. Public opinion here in the United States about President Putin is quite unfavorable. Only 9% of Americans in a recent poll have a favorable opinion of President Putin. Only 9% see Russia as an ally. Is that a problem for President Putin? Uh, it's not a problem, but this is something that we're sorry about again. Uh, we, we, we understand those figures because quite for, uh, well, for, for how many months, for more than, more than a year, American audience um, uh, have been a target for severe anti-Russian propaganda. And, and they were, of course, they, 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 they felt victim of, the, of that propaganda. And that's why uh, lots of Americans, they do think that, yes, Russian hackers are everywhere. Russian hackers are in every, in every fridge. Um, uh, Russian hackers are in every iron and so on and so forth. But this is not true. Those are fake news and, the, and the, this is slander. We heard overnight that General Michael Flynn, President Trump's former national security advisor, is now seeking immunity uh, to talk to the FBI and also the investigating committees in the Congress. His lawyer says he has a story to tell. Are you concerned about anything he might say about his contacts with Russia? No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, uh, listen, uh, we insist, we insist that any, any blamings that Russia uh, could have been interfering in, in domestic affairs of the United States is slander. And it has no, no evidence at all. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, well, we understand pretty well that there are some people who are um, doing their best, their utmost, to keep this issue on the agenda. Well, let them do it before the audience uh, before the audience is bored, and before they change their subject. It was rather unusual for President Putin not to retaliate after those sanctions were imposed by President Obama, because he, he following the conclusions that uh, Russia did interfere in our elections. Did that failure to retaliate have anything to do with the message that General Flynn gave to Ambassador Kislyak? Well. Um, 
uh, listen, uh, sanctions or issue of lifting sanctions or imposing sanctions, uh, any promises uh, could not be an issue of those, uh, of those contacts. Because none of them, uh, neither Ambassador Kislyak nor General Flynn, could have been involved in decision making. So any exchange of view, I don't know. Uh, naming sanctions, let's remember, let's remember the, the let's say, um, uh, the, the uh, decisions that were taken by the, the then administration during their last days in the White House. Uh, extradition of Russian diplomats, uh, I would even say occupation of Russian diplomatic property in New York and Washington this is something that was never seen in, in, in diplomatic affairs in the world for, for lots and lots of decades. Let's imagine a property of the Russian Federation covered with diplomatic immunity was occupied by American Secret Service agents. I mean, well, is it friendly? I'm afraid no. I'm afraid not. And it's not friendly. It's not legal in terms of international law. So, of course, it was a very significant damage for our bilateral relations organized as a farewell party by the then administration in Washington. If we're at the lowest point in history, that means we're in a new Cold War. New Cold War? Well, uh, maybe even worse. Maybe mm -hmm. even worse, taking into account uh, actions of, of the present presidential administration. Worse than the Cold in War? Washington. Well, of course, of course. Uh, well, uh, I've been uh, just saying about this, uh, about this uh, illegal actions against Russian property in Washington and New York, about extradicting Russian diplomats and, and, and all that stuff. Finally, how can U.S.-Russia relations get back on track? Uh, uh, I think uh, if two presidents uh, meet each other, if they exchange views and if they decide that they want to uh, uh, reestablish a dialogue, then there will be a chance for our bilateral relations to get better. Mr. Peskov, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure.